Cratian says he got the story from a book that was given to him by the Count Philip of Flanders, who was a friend of Marie de Champagne, who was Cratian's patron. We don't know where the book come, came from, but this is our earliest source for the Grail story. And then <coughs> the Cratian simply turned it into verse, into old French verse. Cratian was a virtuosic versifier. One of the German scholars said he could shake couplets from his sleeve like a magician. It ripples along. He never finished it. Now, he was a cleric, and it may be that as he went along with the story, he felt he didn't like what it was leading to. The story was continued, as he left it, by what are called Cratian's continuators. Some scholars see three men, some see five there. But they didn't continue the story. They brought in a lot of other Celtic material, dealing largely with Gawain and another set of adventures in time. I spoke of, then, the quest of St. Graal, the two Cistercians who wrote the story from a monastic point of view. We don't know who, what their names were. First, the Cuesta del Saint Graal, and then after that, the Estoire del Saint Graal. And they followed a, a man called Robert of Boron, who also had dealt with this story as dealing with the uh, vessels of Christ's suffering. And here you have the ecclesiastical version of the Grail, in which the hero is Galahad. And the name Galahad, it's called Galahot, is supposed to have come from the Hebrew and means heap of witness. And uh, it's definitely an ecclesiastical accent. One of the things you get in that story is the disqualification of most of the knights because of their uh, secular character. And there are only two that come through, are Sir Bors and Sir uh, Galahad, poor Lancelot, uh, came very close to experiencing the Grail. He came to the castle, came to a room, and there was a priest celebrating the Mass who elevated the host. And an old priest, he almost fell down because the host then became the body of the young Christ was more than he could hold. And Lancelot compassionately was moved to go into the room and rescue him, and he was struck down because he was unworthy to be present. Why? Because of his love for Guinevere. Now, to be healed of a sin, you have to have true contrition. He could not experience contrition for his love for Guinevere. That's beautiful. I mean, that a monk could get that one in speaks very well for him. Uh, the story, however, was uh, developed to the full by Wolfram von Eschenbach, who was a Bavarian knight. And he understood knighthood and what it was about in a way that Gottfried never did, in a way that the monks couldn't. And here you have the hero Percival, Parsifal, as the ideal of the 12th century knight. I'm going to sit down if you don't mind to do this. Um, just because it gives an atmosphere of telling a story. <laughs> the, um, the story is, and, and uh, well, Wolfram says, Cratian didn't understand the story. I have, says he, as my source, the poet Kiot, K-Y-O-T. We don't know who that was. But Kiot is supposed to have been in Spain. And he is supposed to have gotten the story from a Moorish alchemist. So there are alchemical themes in this story. His version of the grail is of a stone vessel, a stone that was brought down from heaven. Now what he's doing there is imitating the Kaaba of the Muslims 
the stone at Mecca, which was brought down from heaven. The grail was a stone brought down from heaven by the neutral angels. There's the key. You know about the war in heaven, where Lucifer, the proudest of the angels, was asked to bow before man as God's highest creation. Formerly, God had said, had said, bow only to me. Now he changes the rules and says, bow to man. And Lucifer would not bow. The Christian interpretation is that it was pride. He would not bow to man. The Shiite Muslim interpretation is that it was love for God. He couldn't bring himself to bow for anybody else. So that Satan in hell is God's truest worshiper. Now they say that the great pain of hell is not that of fire or whatever, but the loss forever of the sight of your beloved, which is God. And what supports Satan in hell? His memory of the voice of his beloved when his beloved said, be gone. This is the Shiite version of it. Well, one way or another, here was this war in heaven, and there were angels who sided with God, and there were angels who sided with Lucifer. A pair of opposites. You understand that the metaphysical mystery is to go past all opposites. Where you have opposites of good and evil, you're simply in the field of ethics. Adam and Eve were thrown out of the garden when they knew the difference between good and evil. The nature knows nothing of that. The neutral angels, neither on God's side nor on the devil's side. And Wolfram interprets the name of Percival as Perceval, the one piercing through the middle of the valley, going between the pair of opposites. So you see? This is heresy. We're in the realm of Gnostic traditions right away here. This is difficult stuff. Wolfram begins his whole uh, romance with a long verse to the point that black and white are the qualities of every act. Every act has both good and evil. What are you going to do living? Since everything you do has two effects, he says, all we can do is lean toward the good. <laughs> 